For more on this Bloomberg exclusive story that we have been talking about all morning, we want to welcome Bloomberg contributing editor Bill Cohen to the newsroom this morning. Bill, always glad to see you. Great Former to Wall be Street here. investment banker, author of House of Cards. Uh, I think uh, I could add a few more titles, right? <laughs> Baker extraordinaire, but we won't even go to the other uh, skills. Writes about AIG's collapse, of course, in this latest institutional investor magazine. Great article. You start by characterizing Hank Greenberg as this kind of almost split personality, right? On, on the one hand, he's a victim of this witch hunt that, that then New York AG Spitzer led. On the other hand, he's the only man who could have saved AIG and the taxpayers to boot. It's quite a character, as if we didn't know that already. Well, you know, Hank is a legend. I mean, there's nobody quite like him. And, you know, what he's been saying since he was essentially deposed by the board and, and by Spitzer, who gave the board little choice but to uh, get rid of Hank in uh, April uh, of 2005, is that, you know, if he had been around still, maybe some of these things wouldn't have happened. Maybe he would have been the man to rein in Cassano. Maybe he would have been the man to uh, say no to the collateral calls but from Cassano Goldman Sachs. Cassano was a little bit of his own making, too. Look, there's... And, 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 that's, and that's the thing that you have to ask Hank about is, you know, you know, you criticized, you have criticized Martin Sullivan, who you handpicked. You have criticized Cassano, who you allowed to thrive and, and to create this big business. You know, how, how do you justify saying that if you had been there, it, it may not have happened the way it happened? And I think his point is, look, I, I am a tough guy. I'm a ruthless manager. Everybody I would have reined them in. Well, in effect, that's sort of what he's saying, and it wouldn't have happened if he had still been there. One of your best quotes in this piece is, I would have told Goldman to stick it. That's true. He said, let's fight I it out it. in court, and we'll see you in five years. He, he says he never would have given Goldman the collateral that they asked for, even though contractually they were obligated to do it, as well as not just Goldman, the yeah, other because counterparties AIG as well. you seem to be pushing around some of the other counterparties. I mean, you mentioned where they kind of negotiated, they used with, the term, with Merrill. With Merrill. Lynch, that's correct, but not with AIG. With Goldman, they just caved every time. And they, by the way, they cut different deals with each counterparty. Gold, Goldman had uh, 96 cents 96 on the dollar, 98 before they cents had to start on the putting dollar. Up collateral. Uh, Merrill Lynch had a, a, a lower number before they had to start putting up collateral. But at the end of the day, Bill, Hank Greenberg would have been arguing with the Treasury Department more so than with Goldman itself. At the end of the day, it was the Treasury that decided who would get paid out at 100 cents on the dollar. Well, Eric, I think one, one of Hank's points, and you know, again, this is one of those imponderables that we'll never know the answer to, but if he had still been there, in other words, if Spitzer had not gone, out, gone after him for accounting irregularities, which, by the way, they settled and proven to be, you know, there was wrongdoing, but if he had not lost his job, if AIG had not been downgraded from AAA, which allowed the collateral calls to kick in, then, then he would have been able to rein in Cassano. He would have been able to to, you know, keep a tighter rein on what they were doing, and and he believes he would have, you know, prevented AIG from going down. Now, but let's again, talk for a moment about whether he was in a position to do that, because as the Bloomberg story we have today, and we need to weave yes, the two stories exactly. together, Which shows an story. Uh, Joe Cass Hank Greenberg was in charge up until 2005 when AIG was underwriting all these subprime credit default swap contracts, and it was those contracts that allowed CDO managers like TCW to swap in lousy subprime loans when the good ones matured. True. What control, Hank Greenberg was in charge when those contracts were actually signed. Were written. So but, again, it, it makes yeah. me wonder really, you know, just how much Hank Greenberg would have been able to control that situation. That's true, because it was all driven by the downgrade trigger. In other words, when, when AIG lost its AAA credit rating a month or so after Hank uh, lost his job, then all these collateral calls kicked in. And that, that is a very uh, seminal moment in the history of AIG. And now maybe they would have lost that credit rating anyway, but it allowed the collateral calls to be made. It allowed substitute collateral like TCW did. Excellent story by Bob and Jody. Fabulous story. And the more you understand and peel back this onion, the, the, you know, the more it makes you cry. <laughs> you know, it's really a, a sad state of affairs how little people really understood what was going on and how the incentives here drove behavior. No surprise. Goldman to underwrite the securities, TCW to continue to manage them and swap them out, uh, the collateral out, and continue to get fees for all of that. You know, it's, it's just that everybody said, you know, get it, get it done, get it out, get it out the door, and I'm going to get my fee. And, and, and it's just sad the way this all developed, Frank.